Hello and welcome to my course, Python for Absolute Beginners. I'm super excited to have you here. We're going to have so much fun going through all of the code that we're going to write, learning how to be effective with Python, and honestly, learning how much fun programming can be. If you're new to programming, don't worry. You're actually in exactly the right place. This course is for people who are new to programming. A lot of courses assume background knowledge or experience with some programming concepts. Do you know what a variable is? Do you know what loops are? Do you know what source code is? Do you know what a compiler is? Do you know how to use it? And then they'll teach you the details of some language. With this one, we're going to start right from the start. That's what we mean by absolute beginners, because we're beginning at the beginning. We're going to cover all the ideas that maybe people who took computer science in college or have computer science degrees spent years studying we're going to condense that down to just the essential things that you need to learn to have a core understanding of programming in general. And we're going to work on Python and some of its most important features. What exactly are we going to cover in this course? Well, we're going to start talking about why Python and why programming. Programming is a superpower and Python is a great programming language that's easy to learn. Put those together and you're off to a good start. Next, we're going to talk about how to get help. Something that's really frustrating when you're getting started in programming is things are not working. You have to type exact, precise stuff to the computer. It's not as hard as it sounds, but if it's not just right, it's going to freak out and crash and not work and refuse to carry on. That's frustrating when you're getting started because it's hard to know how to fix that. We also want to make sure that your computer is ready to take this course. So we're going to talk about setup, how do you get Python the right version of Python installed, as well as what editors you can use to write code and edit code throughout this course. So we want to spend a little bit of time making sure everybody's set up and ready to take the course. And then we get into the programming concepts proper. We're going to talk about the big ideas of programming. And what I mean by this is these are the ideas that you would learn from your first year computer science class if you went and took programming in the university. But instead of spending a whole year in a class, we're just going to spend a little bit of time and hit the high points. Then we're going to start writing some code. Writing your first line of code. Well, we're going to write more than one line of code. We're going to write a bunch of fun things. But here we're going to start writing a little bit of code, visualizing what that does to the computer, both graphically and just running it to see what it does. We'll get started there. Then we're going to make our code interactive. Once you have the core ideas of a programming language in place, it's tricky to figure out how do I attack a problem? You know, I have this code I can write. It makes the computer do stuff. I have this problem. It seems extremely complicated, and I don't really know where to start. But obviously, people can solve it with software, so there must be some path. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a bunch of tips and techniques on how to break down the problem so that it's not nearly as hard as it seems. We're also going to build a couple of games during this course. Games are fun, and they're interactive. And they can be nice and simple, but they also are pretty good stand-ins for this making code interactive story that I told you. We'll try to have fun and write a couple of games, and that'll challenge the things that we can do. We're going to maybe have our game save stuff. So we want to work with files and different file formats. One of Python's really important powers is it has hundreds of thousands of external libraries that are extremely powerful. So we're going to take a couple of external packages, apply them to some of the programs that we write, and I'll show you where to go find many, many more, how to work with these external packages or libraries, and add some really cool features to the programs that we write. And that's it. This is what we're going to do. We're going to go iteratively through simple and then more complicated and more complicated code and add on little bits of super important functionality that I think will actually be a whole lot of fun for you to learn as we go. Should you be a programmer? Sure, there's a bunch of people out there who love programming, but it's probably not for everybody. Or is it? Well, let's look at it from a job perspective really quickly. In 2020, it's estimated that there will be 1 million computer-related jobs that go unfilled. And often when you hear about policymakers talk about things like this, they say, well, what we need to do is train up a whole bunch of more computer scientists and send them out into the world so they can program all the things that need programming. I think this actually misses the point of what programming can be, it also makes it a much more narrow area of study. It's not just about making a bunch of little programmers that can go out in the world and program the things and take all the jobs that we need to be filled. No, programming is a superpower. 
and it's applicable for many, many more people than they initially realize. Here we have a little superhero who has some Python powers. Notice that she has a Python bag from the Python conference she's carrying around. What do I mean by programming is a superpower? If you are a biologist and you collect a bunch of data and you have tens of thousands of entries you got to go work with, and it's more complicated than something like, say, Excel can handle with, well, what do you do? Hire a bunch of people to go through it, hire some grad students, or do you spend 10 minutes writing a little bit of Python code that within milliseconds can take all that data and generate the reports and give her the insights that she needs? Or if you're an economist and you need to do some work with a bunch of financial data, you know, maybe you could make Excel do that. Maybe you could make some other software do it. But with just a little tiny bit of programming power, you can automate whatever it is you're trying to study in the financial markets. And you'll be so far ahead of anyone else that's trying to do that same thing who is not a programmer. So the perspective I want you to have throughout this course is that whatever you care about, are you in psychology? Are you in biology? Are you a physicist? Are you in philosophy? Yes, philosophers, it also applies as well. Whatever you're into, if you learn a little bit of programming skill, you can take those mundane things that are hard to do, are tedious, or take a long time, or even maybe have too much data to even consider processing. With a little bit of programming experience you'll get in this course, you'll be able to go and automate that stuff and really supercharge whatever it is that you care about. So are you ready to be a superhero?